Elizabeth Holmes, once a Silicon Valley superstar, was sentenced to more than 11 years in prison on Friday. Hi, welcome to this new video on Social Soda. I'm Clali, and today I wanted to explore a topic slightly different. Theranos, a biomedical company run by Elizabeth Holmes, who was recently uh, sentenced to 11 years of prison for fraud. In 2002, Elizabeth got accepted into Stanford and she started studying there in autumn. In 2003, Elizabeth came back from the summer holidays with an idea that she decided to show to her uh, one of her professors. They are very enthusiastic and so they decided to join Elizabeth in the creation of her company. And that's how at 19 years old, Elizabeth Holmes drops out of Stanford to create Theranos. The first investors were mostly friends and family connections but eventually they had to turn to VCs so venture capitalist firms and not everyone was buying Elizabeth Peach an idea. The idea in itself was to use only a few drops of blood to test and run tests on it. It was meant to replace a blood test that were taken from um, drawing blood from the vein and the only thing you would have to do was just to prick your finger. In late 2005 Theranos had its first prototype. A couple of years later, in 2007, Theranos got a deal with Pfizer to run a pilot study. The aim of the study was to see if there was any correlations between uh, Theranos results and uh, Pfizer's. But this partnership ended in 2009 and Pfizer concluded that uh, Theranos technology was not useful. Theranos was courting another um, pharmaceutical company called Norvitis based in Switzerland but unfortunately for them when they got to the meeting with Norvitis none of their machines were actually functioning properly. With the growing traction of the company um, many investors uh, joined the board and all the financials that they had seen so far were including those, those Pfizer and Norvitis deals that didn't happen. So the board members were not really happy about this and they actually tried to fire Elizabeth as a CEO and to replace her. But fortunately for Elizabeth, uh, maybe unfortunately for Theranos, Elizabeth managed to turn things around and keep her place as a CEO. Because there were mild results and a lot of errors with the first technology of Theranos, um, they decided to create a second technology called the Edison. And 2009, Sonny Balwani joined Theranos. Sonny Balwani is an important character at Theranos. He was a close personality to Elizabeth. They actually met in Beijing in, before she got into college. Sonny Balwani was born in Pakistan and he moved to the US in 1986. He had a startup called CommerceBit.com that was sold at 200 $32 million. He was a boastful person. He would get angry very easily, always uh, talk about how wealthy he was. And he had this habit of firing a lot of people. And in fact, Elizabeth as well had this tendency of firing a lot easily people. And there was a huge turnover of employees within Theranos between people who were getting fired and people who were resigning. After Sonny joined, Theranos decided to change direction. And they decided to, instead of getting partnerships with pharmaceutical companies, they would go more towards uh, retailers' partners. So in 2010, Theranos got deals with Walgreens, so a super big drugstore chain in the US, and Safeway, which is another big retailer in the country. Walgreens will build um, and renovate its stores to have wellness centers. It was a huge investment for Walgreens and it cost them $350 million to renovate its uh, 17,000 stores. In 2013, so about three years later, nothing had changed. Those big retailers became a bit angry and impatient, so finally they pressured Theranos to have a launching date. The truth behind it is that Theranos decided to build a new machine because the one that they had, Edison, could only perform a few tests and they had told the big retailer companies that they could perform hundreds of them and different types. So they built something that was called a mini lab that was meant to run more tests simultaneously and different test types. But in 2013, the technology was nowhere ready. The mini lab was still under development. So uh, because they still had to launch something, Theranos decided to buy third-party machines uh, from Siemens company and so they acquired um, big testing uh, machines from Siemens, modified them so they could accommodate uh, smaller quantities of blood and they would run tests on those machines. And instead of having the devices right in the middle of those wellness centers that it was meant to be, 
they would send samples to the Theranos lab. Of course, the fact that those samples were sent to the lab instead of just being in the store was to hide as well that Theranos was not using the technology they say they would. And to also hide all the false results and inaccuracies and errors that, was ha that were happening in reality. In addition to that, there were actually many other problems inside Theranos, especially poor management and miscommunication between departments and across departments and the company. At the same time, in the background, several lawsuits were filed uh, by Theranos against employees or um, people that were more or less related to the company for stealing their Theranos intellectual property or over uh, patent ownerships. And um, Theranos inside uh, the company, they had a very strict policy um, about security and intellectual property. Uh, they would make employees and anyone come into the company um, sign NDAs, so non-disclosure agreements. And they also recruited an army of lawyers and especially a very famous lawyer called Davis Boys, which the reputation only would just care of people. But as far as the world knew, uh, Theranos was a very successful company. It could perform 98% of its tests from finger draw, over 300 different types of tests, and all at the same time simultaneously. By 2014, Theranos was valued at $9 billion, and Elizabeth, who had more than half of the shares, became the youngest self-made billionaire. Elizabeth made the cover of a Forbes 400 issue, of Fortune, of other magazines. She was on CNN, on CBS News, USA Today, etc. She did many, many interviews. Uh, she was on TED um, Med as well. She became a fellow of the Harvard Medical School. I just mentioned it again, she was a dropout from Stanford. Barack Obama even appointed her as an ambassador for global entrepreneurship. She was massively famous. If a female leader can build a company from nothing to something that impacts people's lives every single day, it's like there's nothing, there's nothing we can't do. And then, on October 16th, 2015, an article came out on the Wall Street Journal denouncing Theranos as a fraud. From then, as the Wall Street Journal continued reporting about this, the FDA and CMS got involved. They started investigating the company and found many issues in the lab, and so they decided to shut down the labs for two years. The investors lost trust, the patients and the doctor lost trust in the company, Theranos lost millions of dollars, and the company was finally dissolved in 2018. On June 14th, 2018, Elizabeth Holmes and Sonia Balboni were charged with two counts of conspiracy of wire fraud, nine counts of wire fraud, and one count of patient. The trial started in 2021, so it was quite late actually, and there had been a lot of delays between a COVID pandemic and also because of the new pregnancy of Elizabeth in the midst of the trial. Finally, she was sentenced to 11 years of prison and three months. And Sunil Bolwani was tried separately because after this whole debacle, uh, they ended their, their romantic relationship. So Sunny got sentenced to 12 years and 11 months to prison as well. Elizabeth was probably an amazing saleswoman to get all those huge investments. And of course, she deceived investors and they should be compensated somehow. At the same time, I can only imagine the pressure you must be under when you have super popular people, famous CEOs, politicians, investing millions of dollars in your company who have expectations of returns and who want them to be delivered quickly. I think that her ambition was fair and that she needed the drive that she had to um, succeed in the Silicon Valley and in an industry that is so male dominated as well. No one likes to be scammed, <laughs> but I think the real issue with her is that they were put people at risk and they were uh, they put on the market something that was completely unsafe and untested and unregulated. Even Theranos knew that its technology was limited and they decided to use someone else's technology because they knew that theirs was not ready at all. I think that the biggest barriers to the development of her technologies were the fact that um, the management in the company was pretty much 
all led by fear and there was a huge miscommunication across the department everything was closed off you would know what your co-worker would be working on if you were not on the same team and i think that's quite difficult to develop something when you can't really communicate about the same product and one more thing is also the employee turnover was also very huge i think it's difficult to work with people when they constantly change when people come and go um, like it's not it doesn't make like very stable teams as well i think it's also quite interesting that amongst the investors who did their due diligence no one really cared to know or to ask why pharmaceutical companies didn't invest in Theranos and didn't try to buy Theranos out and why all those pharmaceuticals have actually walked away from the company. Another thing that struck me a lot is the complete lack of intervention of the FDA and CMS organizations during the 10 years of operation of Theranos. The company was barely bothered by any regulations at all. If it had not been for someone coming out to a reporter violating their NDA to talk about Theranos and what was happening inside, they would still be operating. You know, those companies like Theranos are always going to try to dodge the rules and regulations and it is the, exactly the FDA's job to check and ensure that doesn't happen to protect its population. And again, it fails because it's not the first time it has happened with OxyContin, with medical devices and so on. Theranos should have stayed an R&D company for much, much longer. And may maybe if they actually had taken time to develop their technology and make it ready, uh, they might have succeeded even more than they had.